And so this is, you know, we launched as a standalone service and it kind of took us by surprise. I mean, we launched it late August uh, and we only announced it with a one tweet on my personal Twitter account and it has just taken off. We are here with uh, Mark uh, Webster from Adobe. Uh, hello, Mark. Thanks for having uh, can me. Can you tell us uh, maybe before we start, uh, what's your position in Adobe? Sure. I'm a director of product uh, at Adobe in a group called DVA, which is our digital video and audio group. Uh, and so the group is responsible for Premiere and Audition and After Effects. Uh, but uh, my team's focus is basically web audio and services. And we were going to talk about Project Shasta, which just a few days ago changed into uh, what you called Adobe Express Podcast, right? Yes. So Project Shasta is a project that our team has been working on for about two years uh, and is headed into Adobe Express. Express is um, a platform to help anybody with the creative needs that they have, whether it's you know designing uh, a, a graphic or uh, creating something for social media. Uh, but our team is focusing on uh, building out tools for podcasters to be able to quickly and easily record and edit and promote their podcast. And and it started, so it started basically like two years ago when you started working on this. Yeah, so our team, I had started a company called Sayspring uh, that was acquired by Adobe in 2018. And uh, it was a voice design and prototyping platform. We became part of Adobe XD, which is our um, digital design and prototyping app. Uh, and our team built uh, voice prototyping and uh, audio prototyping within that tool. Uh, and then we had, we, we kind of sat back and thought, where is, you know, in a, in a world where voice interfaces are ubiquitous, uh, where everybody has headphones in, all audio hardware is becoming smart. Um, what is like the next generation of audio tooling look like? And so we kind of broke off as a separate group and incubated a bunch of new technology and services all around making audio really accessible to people and basically allowing people to uh, work with audio and only have to worry about what was said, not how it sounds. Like, how can we just use AI to make everything work well, you know, offer text-based editing surfaces so that anybody can edit spoken audio content. Uh, and so that all came uh, out as Project Shasta, which we uh, announced last December. And so for the last year, three quarters, I guess, we've been uh, in a public alpha, which is something also Adobe typically doesn't do. Uh, we usually do private alphas uh, because we basically wanted to build it alongside the community. And so I've been getting tons of feedback, iterating on the product, uh, and it, we are going to be headed towards uh, Adobe Express. And so we rebranded as Adobe Express Podcast. We're still in beta. You won't find us on the main Express website. Uh, but yeah, just building out a kind of fun technology and services to allow anyone to work with audio. That's, that's, uh, that's very interesting. And, and tell me uh, your feedback so far from, uh, as I'll shortly say what my feedback is after using at least part of this, uh, new service, but, uh, what, what sort of uh, feedback have you been getting from, you know, like the, the first users of this, uh, of this uh, new tool tools. Our goal has always been to let somebody share spoken audio content almost as fast as it took to say it was kind of like the mantra that we use. Uh, and so there's kind of three pieces to uh, our platform. One is a text-based audio editor that has group recording, creates local files. You know, even while we were setting this up, we had a little trouble with all the technology to set it up. So we wanted to just make sure it was dead simple for everybody. So that is still uh, behind a wait list. And so people have been asking for access and every week we, we grant uh, access to more and more users. And the uh, feedback on that experience has been excellent. Uh, you know, just getting, you know, there's a lot of kind of getting people to sort of understand how to work with audio is always been a challenge. You know, I think especially at a company like Adobe, you know, most projects in our software has something big and colorful right in the middle, right? Uh, and our tools kind of get out of the way. But when you're dealing with audio, you're dealing with something different, right? So we kind of, we have a transcript right in the middle to kind of you know, simulate that experience. But two of the other things that, that are a core part of that experience uh, is an AI service we built called Mic Check, which gives people feedback around the setup of their microphone, the room that they're recording in. And the whole idea was that if we can just make sure the audio that's recorded is good, 
then it will save a lot of the post-production work you need to do to make audio sound good. And so we actually launched that as a standalone page. So anybody can go to, to podcast.adobe.com slash mic check, use that experience. There's no wait list there. But then we also launched an enhanced speech AI service. And so this is, you know, we launched as a standalone service and it kind of took us by surprise. I mean, we launched it late August uh, and we only announced it with a one tweet on my personal Twitter account and it has just taken off. Uh, and I think this is, you know, what, what brought us to speak today. Uh, and so that's an AI service that lets anybody upload a piece of audio and it does a bunch of AI magic to just clean up that audio. So if it's a bad recording, if it's old archival footage. And so we have a feedback link on that as well and have been getting a ton of great feedback there. And so continuing to refine the model, but I think we definitely hit a major pain point that a lot of people have. I want to talk to you about the, the speech enhancement tool that uh, you released. And I think it's First of all, we've been using it uh, on all of our videos that we recorded in IBC and the latest uh, um, expo in Amsterdam. And it worked wonders on audio, which was otherwise had a lot of issues and we would probably have to use like Isotope a lot, like very professional high-end uh, audio um, restoration software. And with your tool, it's basically upload, press, you know, send and you, after a few like a minute or so, you, you get the, the audio file and then bring it back to Premiere and it's almost like it was recorded in a studio like this. So it's, it's kind of amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I, that was the goal was to build a service that let any audio sound as if it were recorded in a professional studio. And when we had started, the focus was really you know, that people record podcasts on a phone, on AirPods, on bad mics. And so that was, you know, we, we were trying to make podcasts sound better. Uh, so we launched that page and what we've been blown away by is like how many different use cases people are using it for, right? So we, we talked about a noisy environment, you know, people have been restoring interviews with uh, activists from the 60s to improve that audio. So I think we definitely have been not only taken back by the response to it, but also just the wide range of use cases that people have been throwing at it and, and seeing it perform pretty well under a lot of different circumstances. Completely. And, and moving on from here, what I want to ask you is, uh, we've been using it alongside Premiere. And the one, I think, biggest request that we have, and probably a lot of your other users, is can you please bring this feature into like the Premiere itself, like the, the, the sound part of Premiere where, where I can just press, you know, uh, a single audio clip and, and it will do it magic and fix the, the audio instead of like uh, exporting the audio bit from Premiere, bringing it into, <laughs> so you, you get what I'm saying. So is this something that is coming? What can you say about this? Uh, so I have no new product announcements to make okay. today, but what I, what I will say though is you know, our focus when we think of web audio and services is to, you know, build a platform that this technology can exist throughout Creative Cloud and Express. Uh, and so the the secret is we have a, a, a mobile app called Adobe Capture uh, that is an excellent app for capturing fonts and surfaces and, and textures in the world uh, to then bring into your projects. And at Adobe Max, our big creativity conference last year, they launched audio recording so that you could, you know, record voiceovers, you know, capture spoken audio out in the world, capture, you know, Foley sounds. Uh, and the enhanced speech service launched in Adobe Capture a year ago, and it's already in there. And so, you know, I think the, the standalone page is kind of what really brought it to everybody's attention in a big, big way. Uh, but so, you know, we're, we're already seeing there's a standalone page. It's part of the core Express podcast. Uh, use case. It's in Adobe Capture. So our mission is very much to bring this technology to our entire you know, product line. But it's true that a lot of other users have asked for it to be in Premiere Audition, you know, other, basically software. Yeah, I mean, it, and video, right? I mean, I think that's the big thing that the, um, that the, the standalone page really fleshed out is how many people wanted this for video. Because we've been focused on audio recording, and conversations and people speaking, you know, and, and, and varying mic quality. 
But I think that that standalone page is just kind of what exploded the video use case. Well, maybe after this video, a lot of a lot more photographers and videographers will actually know about this and and ask you to actually bring it into Premiere Edition, etc. Uh, so it makes a lot of sense. Now, talking about the 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 uh, speech enhancement, like more um, more specifically. Uh, what we would like to see, I mean, the, the results that we have been getting are fantastic, but the audio is maybe even too clinical in, in a sense because it, it removes all the background noise or it, at least as much as it can and usually it can do a lot, uh, almost completely. And then it sounds like you're in a sort of a like dead environment, like in, in like, I, I know, we in, the studio. in a sound booth. Yeah. Yep. And the, my question is, we recorded again in IBC, and when you're recording in like a show, with a trade show, or a place where you have like background noise that you want to reduce, but you don't want to kill completely, is this a request that you've been getting to be able to fine tune? Because currently you can't do anything to the audio. Basically, you just put the file, press send, and then get it back. Uh, so. Are you thinking about maybe allowing some sort of a control over the background versus the foreground voice? Yeah, so it's a, it's a great question, right? The, again, when, when we started the service, and so Adobe Research, to give credit to that team, they've developed this technology. You know, they, they developed the, the machine learning model that powers it all. It's been years in development at Adobe um, before we exposed it. Um, and it, it again, the, the, the purpose was to make anything sound as if it were recorded in a studio, right? And so in a studio, you don't want background noise when people are speaking. Uh, but then with the standalone page and as people have used it, yeah, we're seeing all these different use cases. And so one of the, the, the little tweaks we actually just made is the service now re-blends a little bit of the original audio back into the enhanced audio uh, because to give it a little bit more life um, there's a bunch of weird things that can happen, like taking out laughter. Sometimes it does weird things to laughter, even when you're kind of in the studio use case. Um, but the, we've talked about basically ha having a slider to basically let people kind of decide how much they kind of want to mix back into the original audio, because sometimes you do want background noise, right? You want to take the, the, the primary speaker and bring them to the front of the audio, but you still want some of the life behind it. So maybe the final question I wanted to ask you is, you mentioned that uh, this technology, the, the algorithm was basically developed by Adobe Research. So what can you tell us about this, if you can tell us anything in terms of what does the algorithm actually does in terms of like, it, it takes the audio and what, it, it, it tries and find the, the person talking, but if there are people talking in the background, how does it know to differentiate between them and the background talk and, and you know, how does it work? Yeah, so uh, I do not have one of the PhDs that our research team uh, all does. So I will I will give the dumbed down version of what it does. Uh, so it's basically a model trained on uh, a ton of recordings that we did in a studio to basically say, this is what audio sounds like in a studio. Uh, and then when the algorithm takes in a piece of audio, what it's trying to do is identify like who is the primary speaker and then bring that person's kind of voice up and make it sound as if it should sound in a studio and then get rid of kind of everything in the background. Uh, the noisier a piece of audio is, you could sometimes get weird like artifacting that happens because of that because the model is essentially trying to guess what the original audio should sound like. Uh, so we've seen, you know, uh, interesting artifacts like a lisp occasionally get added to somebody's voice uh, just because it's trying to sort of guess what it should sound like. Yeah, I actually, I think that we, we encountered like one or two issues with some people who, whose English is not their native uh, language. But for the most part, I have to say from our experience so far, it worked beautifully. Like it was able, even with people who are not like native English speakers, it worked beautifully. By the way, uh, is it possible uh, we didn't try this, but if we will try and, and use this on, on people speaking other languages, will it work? Yeah, so it's not, the, the model is not language specific, uh, though it was, so it's looking and matching audio characteristics, not language, though it was trained on mostly English speakers, native English speakers. 
and so uh if if the audio is relatively clean it works on any language uh the noisier the audio is the more it will try and make it sound like the audio characteristics of english and so you can just sometimes get some some weird changes uh it was interesting somebody shared on on uh twitter they had recorded a guitar strumming and then put it into the enhanced speech filter and it almost sounds like somebody humming because it's trying to take that audio and like match the characteristics of somebody speaking actually i think that my next question was completely related to that if, if there is somebody talking and there is music in the background i actually tried that that but i think that the music was too loud for it to completely remove it but if there is like a music which is i know not not that loud but still like you can hear it in in the recording can it completely remove the music from the audio it kind of depends on what the original audio is in theory it should get rid of all of the music uh and so anything that's not a spoken voice it tries to to take out uh but as the audio of music gets louder and just jumbles up with the voice it will then have trouble sort of like distinguishing what is the voice and and what is the music I think that I even tried to like re reuse uh, a processed audio from Shasta again in Shasta and see what it happens. I didn't see a difference and maybe if I saw it was like really minor and not positive. Did you try that? Yeah, so it, it some, sometimes it'll almost do nothing. Uh, if you actually have a piece of professionally recorded audio that was recorded in a studio and you put it through the filter, You basically can't tell the difference. Uh, so it will always basically try to so if audio is pretty good, it just doesn't do much to it. So a lot of times if you run it you know through multiple times, it makes very I mean it'll sometimes introduce weird you know artifacts and stuff. Uh, but for the most part it it will not do much to it. Thank you very much, Mark. and I really hope to see this in more of your product in the future and we'll have some tests that we run. Uh, in in our own uh, video and uh, later on after this talk. No, I'm looking forward to it. There's a, a feedback link on that standalone page that brings you to a form that you can share audio files. You could say this, it did a great job on this, but a bad job on this. So I encourage you to use the feedback form to make it better. It's it's completely just final question. Is it open now for everybody or how does it work? So, so the standalone pages are open for everyone. There's a, a wait list still for the main editing experience and the main audio editor, but the enhanced speech filter uh, and the mic check uh, filter, I can send you the, the links. Uh, they're available for everyone. That's fantastic. Okay. Thank you.